Hi, kids. It's Mr. Larry again. I've got another story. Today's story is called Prairie Storms. Um, it's by a woman named Darcy Pattison, and the illustrator is Kathleen Reitz. Interesting story. She uses words pretty interesting way, and the pictures are just great. So let's take a look. Low, thick clouds dump snow, covering the prairies. Whistling winds shape and mold the snow into drifts and hollows. The prairie chicken claws into a drift, digging a winter roost. These prairie chickens used to be very common in the Midwest, but the new settlers came and pretty much ate them all up. They're bringing them back now from South Dakota into the whole Midwest. Prairie chickens. February. The hibernating groundhog stirs, awakes. It unplugs the door to its den and peers out. Soft billows of fog blot out the sun. Hmm. Do groundhogs really look for their shadow on Groundhog's Day? Hmm, I wonder about that. March. Migrating sandhill cranes sail down, seeking safety from strange winds that twist and twirl. Nervous, they wade and call. Overhead, a tornado roars past, sweeping across the open lands. Ooh, this kind of looks like Nebraska in the Great Plains. Sandhill cranes, the Platte River, a tornado. Oh my, good luck, cranes. April. Rain and rain and rain and it's a flash flood. Walls of water crash through the prairie dog town. Deep in the muddy burrows, prairie dog families hunker, safe in pockets of air until the waters go down. Yeah, the water keeps going lower and lower, but they're up above that in nice big hollows of air. And this might be in South Dakota, yeah where there's lots of prairie dogs. May. After an evening shower, a red fox trots through the still wet meadows. It stalks the mouse and eats. Oh, bye-bye mouse. Then it blankets itself with its bushy tail and sleeps amidst the soft spring flowers. Oh, how nice. Pretty flowers. June. Puffy morning clouds build and build all afternoon until thunder clouds tower high. Flash, boom! The white-tailed doe and fawn both flee helter-skelter toward a tree. Oh, dark old thunderstorm. July. Hmm, who is that? After weeks of no rain and a baking sun, the land is parched. It's dry. Dry summer winds gather up dirt and whip it into a dust storm. The striped skunk bars its doorway with rough balls of straw. Even then, dust creeps into the den, turning the black and white fur to brown. Whoa. August, still no rain. Clouds gather, 
But in this heat wave, the air just crackles with dry lightning. Flash, flash, flash. In the dry, sandy soil, the earless lizard shimmies and disappears beneath the surface. It's cooler down under the ground. No ears, an earless lizard? I wonder how it hears. Maybe it just picks up vibrations. I wonder. September. The burrowing owl chicks have grown and flown. But the mama and papa owl still linger near their underground nest. A sudden cloudburst drums the land, spreading an early autumn chill. And when a rainbow arches the sky, it's time. The burrowing owls take wing and fly toward warmer lands. Bye-bye, guys. See you next year. October. One night, thunder echoes and autumn winds wail. Suddenly, hailstones pound the ground. Caught in the open, the cougar dashes to his den. Hidden beneath a wide ledge, he watches and gnaws on dry and brittle bones. Hmm, I think that's a bone in his mouth. It looks like he might be smoking a cigarette, but I don't think so. I think that's one of those dry bones. <clears throat> November. I see needles of sleet coat the dried grasses and weigh down the trees. The bald eagle clenches its branch, enduring, letting its wings shed the sleet. When the storm passes, the eagle preens and then soars to hunt. It preens its feathers, getting them all nice again, and then soars to hunt. December. A blizzard rages, a sudden whiteout. The bison herd turns, facing into the teeth of the wind. The wind has teeth? I think that's kind of how we talk about it. Facing into the teeth of the wind. The herd stands unshaken, unmovable, undaunted. The bison stand prairie strong and defiant. Gee, there's some interesting words in there that you might want to go back and think about. Ask somebody to help you figure them out if you have to. I did. Oh, yes. Here's some pages. Uh, it says for creative minds. Lots of information in here. Yeah. Lots of things to think about. And you can go through this, too. It'd be kind of fun to do, I'll bet. Maybe again, ask somebody to go through it with you, talk it over with you. Well, that's all for that story. Take good care. See ya.